Stay tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled is Julian Ackley and Todd Murray. Actress, artist, <laughs> she's really not an actress, but she should be an actress. <laughs> artist uh, Julian Ackley was born and raised in Kentucky. She studied art and religion at the University of Virginia, and after college, she uh, had to decide what she was going to do. Was it to be a preacher or to be an artist, Julian? Well, um, I'd actually um, changed my mind about being a preacher midway through school, but so when I graduated, I didn't know what I was going to do yet. But you continued your art classes? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And were you, did you, when did you decide to be an artist? Well, um, I was actually at the time working as an interior designer, and it was just sort of um, a revelation that occurred to me in one moment that I was supposed to be an artist, and I knew if I did that that everything would turn out all right. Was it a divine revelation? I guess so, yeah. But I mean, why, why were you studying um, the Gospels, so to speak? Um, well, I guess I'm, my interests have always been in, um, in you know, what man's um, potential is. And so I guess that's how art and um, religion relate to me. Did you have any background in religion? Was there any reason to take religion classes or to be a preacher? Um, no, no, no. No one in really. your family? No, not really. No. Were, were there any artists in your family? No, not really. Mostly no. um, doctors. <laughs> oh, is that right? So you were in Louisville, I guess, right? Uh huh. And did you stay in Louisville and and do your interior decorating and then your painting? Um, no, I actually was working in um, Michigan as an interior um, decorator, and then I moved at, out to Napa to begin my career as an artist. What, why Napa? Well, actually, because my husband um, was wanted to work in the wine industry, oh, and I thought I California see. would be a good place for doing art. Was he uh, in doing wine business or working in the fields or at the mm -hmm. winery? Or yes, uh huh. So that took you there, uh -huh. or did you meet him there? Um, no, no, I didn't meet him there. I met him in school. Oh, you did. Yeah. Then you went to Napa together. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you paint a lot of people. Did you ever paint the vineyards or paint uh, the wine process? No, I've really only painted people. That's all I'm interested in. <laughs> but did you take that kind of training in school? No, my training in school is very limited. I didn't find it very interesting. Ah. Oh. So you, d you haven't taken classes after that? No, my, my um, art education is Is that small. right? Yeah. Then how did you get started painting people? Um, well, I think my biggest influence has really been um, communication with angels <laughs> who speak in a different language, which is, um, which is where complex ideas can be um, communicated all in a single um, instantaneously in a single image, which is very similar to art. So they come, the angels speak to you. Mm -hmm. We have angels on our chairs. Yeah. Did you see them? We yeah. have <laughs> angels. <laughs> Great. Um, and then that defines what you're going to be painting? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, exactly. Or, or it will give me insight into a person who is, um, who is sitting for me. Oh, I see. I see. But do you yeah. ask certain people to sit? Or do you do commissions? I do commissions usually, yeah. And then models. you did a series of different kinds of, of paintings. Um, how do those series change? What do you decide to do? Um, well, whatever I'm inspired to do, I guess. But um, are, the, are they, like, would they all be nudes at one time and then all be heads at another time? Or? <laughs> well, I started off doing um, all heads, all portraits. I'm going to show one of these. Tell us when this was from. That is actually, um, I think, the very last portrait I've painted. Oh, so it's very recent. Mm -hmm. And did someone sit for this? Yes, he did. And did the angels tell you anything? Um, uh-huh. Yes. 
I mean, it's, um, this would be the result of what they told me. <laughs> in other words, while you're painting, you're getting your inspiration. Yeah, uh-huh. Or in between paintings, I um, take time to receive guidance. That's great. That's really, that's really good. Um, what kind of materials do you use in your work? Um, mostly just acrylic on canvas, nothing fancy or special. So you didn't have to learn how to do that, or did you learn it yourself? Um, no, was, well, I just used, I'm very lazy, um, technically, so I don't, I just use the simplest thing, which acrylic is really, you know, a It challenge. dries fast? Yeah, yeah, there's nothing complicated about it at all. Do you build up, like, I'm going to show this one, too. Do you build the image? I mean, is there a lot of layers of work mm -hmm. on here? Oh, yeah. It's, there's probably like a pink layer underneath that, a purple layer, a blue layer. Yeah. And you just keep moving. How long does it take you to paint something like this? Well, um, you know, I never really timed it. Um, but days, weeks? It can, take, it can take days or it can take weeks. It's just you spend a lot of time when you're actually painting and then a lot of time when you're not painting, but it's sort of cooking in your mind. Are there other things that you do or are you just totally into painting? Um, well, I also, um, I'm in the middle of writing a book and I do tarot card readings for people sometimes. Oh, you do? <laughs> oh, that's yeah. interesting. That's when the angels come in handy, I bet. Oh, yeah. Did they speak to you when you're opening the cards? Oh, yeah, that definitely helps. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be good. No wonder. I knew there was some kind of mysticism here <gasps> that was going to come out, and it's the cards, I guess. <laughs> do, you, do you do astrology? Uh, I don't know much about astrology, no. Um, but tarot cards are very similar to painting in some way because, um, once again, it's complex thoughts being um, conveyed through a single image that a person intuitively perceives. But you also have to know how to tell a story, don't you? I mean, the cards maybe tell the story, but you have to be able to communicate it to the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely, a, that's definitely a big part of it. Um, you're using a stage name. I would say, no? Yeah. Julian Ackley? That's my real name. Is it? Yeah, my husband's name is Ackley I, too. Ackley I. But um, Julian, when I first saw the name come across my desk, I thought it was a man. Yes. But did you, uh, is that, there's something about that name that's it's specific? Is there um, a reason that you were named Julian? Um, well, I changed my name myself, but a long time before I became an artist. Ah. Um, when I was a kid, I did. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> it just, one day I just had um, an overwhelming um, inspiration to change my name to Julian Ackley, and I never knew why or what it meant, but I just didn't question it. So. And, and your family didn't, was okay? They like my old name better, but, <laughs> but I think the... But you sign up. your paintings, Julian. Yeah, well, that's the name I've been going by, you know, for ten years or so. And is this a self-portrait? Mm-hmm. That is. And how did you do it? Um, what do you mean? Did oh, you look in a mirror? mirror? Uh -huh. Did you? Yes. Yes. And are you painting at the same time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this, the blue, it's very uh, Gauguin. It looks very. Oh, I love Much, Gauguin. Do you? Oh, yeah. Was it a big influence? What other yeah. artists have influenced you? Um, in terms of artists, um, I like a lot of the artists who use are really strong on color, like Gauguin and Warhol, and um, those are two of my favorites. But I like them all. Just Van Gogh. Just lots of color? Yeah, lots of color and kind of simplified images is what my preference is. Do you show in galleries? Have you had gallery shows? I haven't really. Um, put my energy into dealing with galleries as of yet. Mostly just been selling through word of mouth and things of that nature. People, do they come to your apartment? How would they find this? I mean, they could call me <laughs> and I could give them your number if right. they wanted to, to have more information about you. But your friends see them? and mm -hmm. Yeah, my husband actually built a website for me. So um, people sometimes view my art over the web, which but is helpful. Yeah. Um, well, I think one of these days we're going to see you in a gallery, <laughs> <laughs> and I, th I think a whole series of influence by, by artists, a series influenced by various artists of your work will be great. Mm -hmm. So what, what are you going to do in the, when you're not painting? When I'm not painting? Do you cook? No. Do you hang out? You don't? No. 
No, this pretty much takes up all my time. Does it? Mm -hmm. You paint all day long? Yes. <laughs> well, you watch for Julie, Julianne Aklii, and if you need to know anything about her, just give me a call. You'll see the number at the end. And don't go away because we'll be back with Todd Murray. Thanks, Julianne. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and we're back with actor, entertainer, baker, I must call him an entrepreneur, Todd Murray. Todd's taken voice lessons, acting lessons, and uh, is back in business for some reason because he took business and music in school at Susquehanna University. And th is that a natural kind of degree to get no, at a school? No, it's very strange. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered about that. <laughs> Very strange. I started <laughs> off um, uh, as a business major. Um, I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania where a skill, some sort of profession, was what you did. And to think about music or acting was... Even music was a little out of... A little out of. I mean, what do you do? Because Well, you were a very talented musician, evidently. I mean, you play the piano. Yes. Maybe you could have taught. I don't know. That's, that's exactly it. When you're in a small <laughs> town like that, there's not a professional orchestra. There's not oh. a professional, there's not really a profession as a musician necessarily. If you're going to do music, you've got to teach. So I didn't really have a, a role model in central PA um, to say, oh, I could make a living at but this. But is central uh, Pennsylvania Amish country? It sure is. It is. is it, but is there a lot of music in that community? Oh, a lot of music. It's, um, Are you uh, Amish? I'm not Amish. Oh, okay, but there's a lot of music in that community because maybe I was thinking that influenced your music talent. No, no. Well, you know what? The, there's a very big, it's a Bible belt. So there's a very big um, influence of gospel music there. And um, that's where I got my start was in the church. I played the piano. I oh, sang. See? I directed choir, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I grew up in a very musical family. Not as profession, but we were all very musical. We, uh, my my uh, parents instilled in us taking lessons and, and uh, uh, sort of pushed us, you know. But you obviously had a voice, too, because when you came on stage, I mean, the things that you did were in musicals. Correct, correct. And that's, I, was, I started out, oddly enough, um, wanting to be a chef uh, in oh, high school. Oh, you did? I did. I wanted to oh. be a chef. I was going to go to um, a school up in Rhode Island be a professional chef, and then I auditioned for, I mean, I always sang all through school, but I auditioned for the, the uh, school musical, Grease, and uh, got the role of Danny Zuko. Weren't you too tall for Danny? <laughs> I was too everything <laughs> You're for very tall. I didn't have a lot to pick from. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, it was the start of a real, I mean, the world just opened up on stage to me. It was, I just could not imagine anything better. You and loved it. Loved it. And uh, so that's, I still went to school to be a business major, Got a year and a half into it and, and said, you know what, I, I'm just not passionate about accounting and debits and credits. But you must have been good at it, otherwise you wouldn't have gotten that I was, that but far. I wasn't passionate about it. Uh -huh. And I, I really, you know, I've always sort of um, followed a passion. You did a lot of work in college, stage work. Uh -huh. I mean, did you do the pir Pirates? Of Pirates, Penzance? Of Pirates of Penzance, I did uh, off-Broadway in New York. Oh, you did. So yeah. then, well, let's finish college. Okay. You did a lot of musicals in college then. College, I did uh, several musicals, uh, mainly uh, Camelot and Guys and Dolls. But it was there that I auditioned for this group called Recreation that provides entertainment to USO, uh, as a USO group, uh, to Veterans Administration's uh, hospitals all over the, the country. And being a part of that group, paid for some of my college. Oh. So I auditioned for it and got in. And, and then did you travel while you were in college? I traveled while I was in college. Oh, that was great. So it was a very unique experience. I mean, we would get home at 1 in the morning and have to get up at 7 for, for uh, did classes. Did you go far away on the weekends? or was On the it weekends we would. It was all by van. We drove. We put the sets up. We put. It, it, was, it was a lot of hard work, but I, I couldn't think of anything that defined 
sort of helped define me as an adult. As being and you actually got paid? You actually got paid? I got paid through uh, tuition at school. Oh, that's how they did it? Yes, I oh, got tuition at school. I see. So when I got out of the group, I then had two more years at uh, this university, Susquehanna University, and uh, did Guys and Dolls and, and then auditioned for, during my summers, I auditioned for uh, 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 theme parks. When I was in school, and I ended up like down what theme Opryland. parks were they? I was down at Opryland, Opryland right? And and uh, uh, Dolly, what was that? Dollywood, no, was Dollywood. <laughs> <laughs> what else was but, there? Uh, and then I did uh, actually I did Disney over in Tokyo. Oh, you did. I sang in in, uh, in Tokyo. You were too me. tall for that too. Oh my gosh! Talk about <laughs> giant man. Exactly, <laughs> you're very tall. <laughs> towered over all of them. Like oh, that was great. They must have thought you were gorgeous coming in I don't there. Know about you were that. totally different. It was halfway maybe between that and being scared to death. Like, what is that? He's too how big. Long, how long did you stay in Tokyo? I was there for just over six months. Wow. Great experience. Really great experience as a lead singer in the in the park and. Uh, <laughs> uh, got to know Japan and, and got to know the culture a little bit, and it was really, really good. Were you still interested in cooking at that point, or had always, you just you still cooked. were, or always, always, always eating? Which <laughs> which one? <laughs> always eating and always cooking. I've always I've always cooked. I mean, I was a weird kid. I'd come home from from little league and make banana bread. Did your you know? mom help you? Was your mom sure. a baker? No, or did, no. I no? wish she baked for us. I mean, we had five kids and. Um, you know, we lived on a farm, and she canned vegetables. And, and uh, you helped do all this, so the kids saw it. Maybe you just were. A, was a part of your life. It was what I, I like to. I'm a very creative person, so I liked creating uh, breads. I, I used to love to paint. I loved animals, so I always was bringing a snake, a rat, a mouse <laughs> into the house. You know, it's it was a fun upbringing, and luckily I lived uh, in a in an area that was conducive to that, and parents that. Liked it too. When you when you came back from Tokyo, is that when you went off Broadway? Uh, Did some work off Tokyo, Broadway. Tokyo. After Tokyo, I went to a, a small theater in Pennsylvania called Allenberry Playhouse and did uh, three three productions there. And then I moved to New York City. Now you got. Weren't keep you in, afraid to go to New York? I sure was. From out from this little town. I sure was, but I was determined. And uh, I met some people at uh, Allenberry Playhouse who lived there. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, I figured, okay, yeah, it's scary, but there's Eight, of the eight million people who live there. I must be able to figure it out. And I did, and uh, it was an exciting, exciting time. And within three months, I got a role in uh, Pirates of Penzance, and um, then ended up working for that company several times, doing the gondoliers and Mikado. And right, you did all this, uh, um, so, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan? Yeah. There's, Is there's that all they did? It's, it was a Gilbert and Sullivan troupe called NIGASP, New York Gilbert and Sullivan Players. Oh, that's great. Yes, and they're still in existence, and they just moved to a much bigger uh, house now. I stayed at the Savoy in London, and oh, that so was the that. original theater yes. that uh, they did all those Gilbert and Sullivan productions in. Did beautiful. you go and look in the theater? Yes, it's beautiful. beautiful. It was so charming. And when I was in Washington at the, at the Shakespeare, at Folgers Theater, uh -huh. They also do some Gilbert and Sullivan, but they do it so funny because it, it's more of a parody. I think the real Gilbert and Sullivan is parody enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know. I think a lot of them do parody now because they try to bring it up to date. Otherwise, you're, you're sitting watching a historical dated piece uh -huh. because they they sort of slam on the royalty all the time and yeah. and things of the day. So it's I think it's rather clever when they bring. Uh, present day politics in that's what they it. did right. yeah that's it, what they it, did it makes it fresh you also um you, you must have enjoyed that because i think that music is great it's great it's fun to sing and it, is it easy or hard it's hard it's, is it? it's halfway between opera and, and uh, musical theater so um, you have to have some training i think vocally because it looks it. easy well, that's I mean, the it trick, looks isn't it? easy. Yeah, that is the trick. Isn't it? <laughs> to make yeah. it look easy. Uh -huh. But it, it's very good training, and you have to it, to do it eight times a week. You have to be able to uh, sustain vocally for it, and it, it's not easy music, but it's fun. But you were in another musical, The Secret Garden. The Secret Garden was a national Broadway tour that uh, uh, we I was in on that tour for I think a year and a half. And you did cabaret. Oh, you you sang in cabaret. I sang. You did I had cabaret. my own cabaret. You yes. had your own show here in Los Angeles. And how did you how did you write it? How did you decide to do your own thing? Well, I started. Um, I know we're, we'll talk about the bakery business soon. I moved out pretty here. soon because the smell is overwhelming <laughs> in here. It's like you just opened the oven. <laughs> um, I moved out here to start this uh, baking company. 
Uh, and from off Broadway, that's what happened. Well, I, from the tour, I I met this gentleman named Oliver in uh, San Francisco. Here we have this. While I was on tour, right? Oliver's Beckerai. He was a he's a German gentleman, who moved here, uh, and moved to San Francisco and started a bakery there. And his name is really Oliver. Yes, okay. Oliver Zenglein. And uh, while I was on tour, and we were sitting in San Francisco for I think for six weeks, and I saw the breads, and then oh. I by by chance met Oliver, and uh, went on about my my way on the tour for another six months. And when I got back to New York, I thought, you know what, I wanna, I'm gonna call Oliver and see if he wants to sort of license to me in Los Angeles. And why was that? You were singing, you were touring, you were- Well, I'll tell you what, the business part came, came sneaking in again because um, I was, I got off the tour after making decent living for a year and a half, having a secure job, all exciting. I got off the tour, went back to New York, um, out of a job. <laughs> You know, once again, here I am, no job, because that's the way that business is. Yeah, but you don't, do you really think of yourself as out of a job when you're not on the stage? I guess you do. Absolutely, you have no income. All of a sudden you're, <laughs> you're watching out your, of a job. <laughs> you're watching your savings account go down and down um. and down and, and you're just, you become, what I didn't like about it is, is the, uh, your artistic expression becomes about what I think you want to see rather than what I do. And that was the case. I was constantly going in there trying to be who they wanted me to be oh, so I right. could have a paycheck again. And I got in the uh, elevator in my apartment building with this gentleman who was uh, probably in his mid-70s. And he was particularly happy that day. And I said, you know, what, what's going on, Ron? And he said, he said, I got some extra work today and that's really gonna help me out financially for the week. And I'm dry, writing down, you and know, all of a sudden like, I felt my face, years old. my face melt. And I'm like, I don't want to be aching for, oh, no. for um, extra work when I'm 70. Oh. So I, I, I started thinking about it. And I did have a passion. I've always had a passion for baking and for business. And um, I just started thinking about it. And I thought, you know, I think this is the right move. And so far, I'm really happy in my choice. But before we get to your baking, right. or maybe it comes after your baking, your cabaret act, um, so, the grand scheme was the bakery would hopefully be a means to an end of being able to uh, continue being an artist. Um, so we did the bakery so first. So the bakery, <laughs> totally all consuming for about five years, six years, started to get oh, some free time. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I mean, it was me. I was selling. I was selling bacon. Uh, did you have the to find work. the? <laughs> did, you didn't do it in your kitchen. No, I'm no, sure. <laughs> I had a commercial kitchen that I found through a friend here and. Uh, negotiated everything from New York. I arrived here June 30th, moved into my bakery July 10th, and delivered my first loaf of bread on July 25th. So within. So you had to do you had to like do the samples and everything the while samples, you first came oh, here. Absolutely. But you had all the recipes from Oliver. Yes, yes, I had recipes and I had uh, a baker, a commercial baker. But he didn't come down and help you. The com Oliver did not. The commercial <laughs> baker did. Because <laughs> now I've made a couple loaves or two, but not you know 100. <laughs> in a day. So, uh, he, so we got this started and the, um, about five years ago I started to, to be able to have a little time to myself again. I see. And I auditioned for this thing called the Cabaret Symposium which they select 35 people throughout the nation to uh, study back at the O'Neill Center in Connecticut. And I got it selected so I went and did that and thought uh, to, just to see if I was still had some interest. Well I did so I came home and put together my own show and, uh, which I did at the Cine Grill. So you had to write it. Uh, I wrote it. I have a uh, had a director. They, everyone tells me you have to have a director. I keep thinking if you write your own material and you can sing and you can get up on stage, why do you need a director? Well, I think because it's pretty hard to be um, to to be able to judge yourself. I you think know, that's you, yeah. You know, you can't you can't sit and think what what feels good looks good. You think looks good from the stage it's may not totally be the case. Totally different, right? And this gentleman, his name is Art Mankey, uh, is one of the founding fathers of uh, a Glendale company called A Noise Within. Oh, I know and, that. And uh, he has a passion for music, and he's also a very good actor and director. So I thought great combination, and it was. We had a, a great time, and I was scared to death. He shaped the show. He more shaped or less. the show. Helped me write it. Helped me select the music. Um, and uh, it was a great experience. And then what happened? Were these things burning in the oven? <laughs> <laughs> no, luckily at that, at, by this time I had somebody else in the office helping me out. So, uh, But how did people know about your bread? How did they? Yeah, you had to get out Sales. and sell it. Sure, absolutely. To markets? Or to, to markets, to restaurants, to caterers. Um, you know, I started off at a very <laughs> small budget. Um, 
my mother, in a supreme act of <laughs> loyalty for a child, got a, a loan on her farm to help uh, me start my bakery. Is that right? So it was a it was a small beginning. So I had to do mm -hmm. I had to wear a lot of hats and. Yeah, it's, it's a great product to go to. You must have been good sell. in the kitchen for her to think that. One of the specialties <laughs> of your, um, of what you do, your bakery, mm -hmm. is called a bachelor loaf. Yes. And I want to show this because it's like, is it a half a loaf completely It's basically or not? a half a loaf, yeah. It's uh, seven to eight slices, and it's 14 ounces versus a 28 ounce loaf. And this is white bread, right? Yeah, I make, uh, I make it in three flavors right now, a uh, white, six grain, and then This I is a, a six grain. But a tell, us, tell us why it's called a bachelor loaf. Because I was hearing, these, are, these products are all uh, no added fat, no dairy, no cholesterol, no sugar, and there's no preservatives in them. So obviously it's to my benefit to get it to you quickly, fresh, and have you enjoy it quickly. And I was having comments like people were freezing half the bread or they didn't want to um, uh -huh. spend the money on a whole loaf right? Um, because it would go bad. And uh, uh, so I started thinking, hello, <laughs> it's people are asking for a smaller loaf, and so why not give it a try? And uh, it's, it's really taken off. And they off. do it. This, I've had this raisin walnut. This is raisin walnut. It's divine because you sent me over a loaf that I <laughs> toasted it I and like had it. it. It's really good, but the rolls are so good. Let me pull these rolls out and show them. That's a pretzel roll. This one. Uh -huh. And uh, the other one's a rustic roll. And you had s another kind of roll here today. Uh, yes, a, uh, this is a cranberry. They see they're all crusty, they're, they're crusty breads. But they're moisty, 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 moisty delicious. Moisty, <laughs> Inside, they're really good. This pretzel bread, I don't know. I sliced it and toasted it because I thought it brought out the flavor. Um, always good. Do you just keep experimenting with different kinds of breads? Yeah, it comes different ways. I see. Uh, I usually travel to Europe at least once <coughs> a, a year to to uh, to see what else is going on over there in the bakery world. And you get ideas and you bring them back and you experiment. Or lots of times, chefs will say. Um, oh. For instance, I have a, a catering company that I work with named Bread and Butter, and he had a wedding a Hawaiian wedding, but they wanted bread. Now typically Asian, uh, you know, that yeah. sort of area does not really use bread. They use poi and rice, but it's not a bread kind of place. So uh, we started brainstorming, and I came up with, uh, between the two of us, a brioche with macadamia nut, golden raisin, mm. and coconut, mm. and curry. Mm. So all, now I have this bread called a mm. Pani Pacifica. Mm. Are you gonna, are you selling that too? I sell that wholesale to uh, chefs and to. Uh, oh, <laughs> we have to go. And I didn't get to eat all this bread. But thank you for coming, you're Todd. You're welcome. Thank you. And for I having think me. I'm going to see. Todd. I think we might have Todd's restaurant somewhere. Do you think so? Possibly. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today on the Joan Quinn Profiles. And keep writing to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 917. And we'll see you next time. Bye.